Hi, my creative friends. How are you going? I just thought I might have freaked my own self out if I'd stuck my head in that view. But as you can see, I've just kind of prepped up the base of my uh, canvas. And what we're going to do is a massive big couple of ring pours, maybe two or three. But I haven't got a huge amount of paint. So as you can see, I have just done my edging in white. And I'm now just going to get into a jug, black and white, and my fancy idea for today is an idea that I got from another awesome artist, Australian artist, dirty artist, her link will be down below. I'm going to add my mirror effect into, this is just Floetrol with gel medium thickener in it, and I'm going to just spray it in. I'm not worrying about it coming up up on here because I'm figuring it might look cool a little bit. Spraying it in, mixing it up. Oh, it's made it a bit. Oh, it's interesting. Just trying to see how it's integrating. Is it integrating? It's not really integrating. Oh, no, it is integrating in a really interesting way. I'm going to really squirt quite a bit more into there. And then I'm going to layer my paints into a jug. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, well, it would help if I put it in view for you to try and see, wouldn't it? But it's not really mixing in. It's kind of sitting within. But because it's Floetrol, when it dries, it should be clear, theoretically. And we could have some silver speckles through the pore. Who knows? Let's just do a bit of that. Just because. And then let's um, get it into the jug and pour it out. Oh, I think I've just sprayed some into my face. Oh, it'll have a mirrored effect. All right, here we go. I've got a jug. And the only other thing that's a bit different is that I've put a little bit of the satin enamel deco art. I don't know if you can hear me that far away. Deco art satin enamel into the black, which is one part black paint, two parts Floetrol, and one tablespoon of black enamel into this big 500 ml cup. In here, one part paint, two parts Floetrol. And in here, Floetrol thickening gel medium and sprayed up paint which kind of looks cool but could be a disaster on a whopping big gigantic canvas let's go oh i didn't like what i saw then it looked to me like there were lumps in my uh, black paint which will be devastating um but of course we won't let it be devastating all right we just won't We've got no time for devastation. Let's put a squirt of that into there. Just see what happens. Yes, no time for devastation. We'll call it a textured look. And if the pore itself comes out looking... Oh, let's put a spray on top of the black. And if the pore comes out looking any kind of decency, um, and it does have a few lumps in it, well, the solution is to resin coat it. Because with the resin coating, every single time will hide those kind of um, discrepancies. Right, I'm going to leave that last little bit just in case I want to mix up some more and do another kind of twirly whirly pory bit or something. But here I go. I'm going to start here. That's enough. Oh, I didn't like the middle. I hate it when I do that. Oh, I'm so hard on myself. I'm actually not doing the ring pour. I'm doing a straight pour. And I will figure out what to do with the middle parts in a minute. Yeah, I'm glad I um, resisted from pouring the whole lot in because I feel like I want to kind of see what this paint is like. So let's do one of these, which is called a dirty pour, which we all know. 
and bring that up to there. It's got some really super nice effects. And everything else is looking really interesting and good, except for the yucky middle parts, which I'm so annoyed at myself about. Because I know better, you know? It's one of those things where you know you know better, so why did I do it? Ugh. Okay, pouring. I don't know if you can see this far down. I'm doing my jug again. I'll bring it back up here. I think you can see there. And I'm going to put a spray again of the mirrored effect. And then the last little bit of the black. And the last bit of the white. I'm kind of pouring it down the side of my jug so it doesn't go into itself. I create too many greys at this point. I'm not giving it another squirt of that and that can just sit over here while I have a look at what's been emerging and some very nice things are emerging I would like to announce. So I'm just wondering, my thoughts out loud are, let's get this last bit of paint down so that when I do start doing the tilt because it's so big, I'm only having to do it once. So I like this line here and in terms of composition, I'm gonna match it to here, come around here and then I'm gonna wrap around that one. Just don't know why, just feel like doing it. Off we go. So what did I say? Around here and around this one. And then we're gonna wrap around this one here. And I'm gonna bring this over here. And you can go outward to there. And I have got the littlest bit of black paint, enough to do a line if I wanted to. Now, I'm bearing in mind that the one thing I regret not doing is probably covering the whole canvas in the white because I am not that confident that I'm going to be able to tilt this to cover the whole canvas in a way that's stylish. So off I go no matter what using my patience and I'm wondering since I'm going to lose a bit here why don't I put one of my cups under there to catch that so that I could use that paint oh all right so I'm going to tilt this way now and see how we go with catching that paint and I'm trying to be patient walking around the paint is going in the cup, I would like to announce. Big on the announcement today, aren't I? I'm stopping for a minute. Yeah. And so from this point on, we've sped up to times four. I, at this point, decided that I would try and get some more of that paint all over the canvas and in doing so smudge some of that black with the white making yucky bits of grey and causing myself quite a bit of angst in terms of making messes where I didn't want them. However really at the end of the day I was just trying to get the raw parts of the canvas covered in paint so that when I was doing my tilting there would be a much easier flow for that paint to come down and across. So I really just fiddle farted at this point on and was having quite a bit of fun, but also experiencing a level of frustration and annoyance at myself for not making enough paint and doing a complete base coat. And I was in my head going, oh, you should know better, come on. And yes, I do know better. And my biggest tip for this large creation is to make up a huge amount of white paint and lay it down as a base. It doesn't need to be as thick as everything else. It's just so that your paint can slide across when it comes to time to tilt. So here I go. I'm just about to start the tilting and bravo. Right about now, I come up with an idea. I go and get some cardboard to catch the bits of paint that are going to or the parts of the paint that are going to tilt off so that I can reapply to other dry areas on the canvas 
So off I go and abandon the video, which I often do. If you watch my clips, you'll see that I do that quite a bit. It's quite silly of me. But I place the can, the cardboard down, and here we go, tilting, tilting, and it's there to happily catch the excess paint. And it was a good idea because I was able to use it in other areas. So oh, it looks like I was going to pour the paint directly onto me then, but I didn't. And I'm just having a merry old time tilting now, tilting this way, tilting that way. And soon I tilt the canvas um, in the long ways, yes, this way. And I was always mindful to try and balance my tilting by bringing the paint back to where it was as much as I possibly could. And throughout the tilting time, a couple of globs of paint revealed itself. So I just picked them out, as you can see. And then here I am applying some more of the paint from the cardboard onto the canvas. And it does not affect the painting. I really do end up tilting all of that off, but it helped the paint come off or, or rather, it helped the tilting process so much more. Oh, let's see what I'm going to do. I'm going to just catch my breath. I often talk through these videos at 100 miles an hour. And once again, I'm just smoothing that over, knowing that I'm going to tilt all of that away. Uh, so at this point, I wasn't so worried about the murkiness. Though I do recall when I was making it, I was like really annoyed at myself and trying to fix it, even though I know that I'm going to tilt it off. So it's really funny um, watching myself back and seeing the strange things I do. Um, I don't know if you've ever caught yourself or recorded yourself, but... It's a really interesting process because the fiddling, the amount of fiddling we do that's unnecessary. Like, look at all these little intricate little bits of whirling I'm doing. And I pour over, I tilt over all of that. So how hilarious. So here we go. The big massive tilt in one direction, stopping just in time. And at this point, the satin rings start to reveal. And here we go, coming back in my direction towards me and I've really got that canvas up almost opposite me to the point where it's you would could call it upright and I'm just pouring all of the paint off because of that funny bit I just made reference to before was so awful and look it's gone so you know it was just hilarious some of the things I did in this process finally I was satisfied and could walk away all right, it's dry. Let's go and have a look and see if any of that um, mirrored spray came up through it. All right, I'm gonna try and keep it still. And I don't have good sun here for you to catch it. Oh, but it is there. Look, here we go. And it, I really love how it's kind of speckled and then there are lines of it. And I might move us out of this area and try and find a place where there's sun because it is definitely there subtle as it is but it's so highly reflective it's gorgeous all right let's go and find another place in the sun oh hang on how did that go i saw it just nearly blinded me oh I reckon I can make it happen? No. All right, let's try another spot in the house. Okay, so I've got it here. And I have to almost be in the shade because I've... Look, when I take my head away from the sun, see how you can't quite see it? But if I'm in the shade, you can sort of see how it's reflected through. Am I even making sense? Reflected through? And there's some really interesting spots where... Here. Oh, that's only my hand. You're not going to be able to see that. Where it's come through and it's kind of triangular. Oh, geez, this is really dreadful attempt. It's kind of triangulated itself. See, it looks like stars popping through. 
and unfortunately it's one of those really crappy ones where you just can't catch it on film no matter what I do oh what a bugger in real life it's really really classy because it's just so subtle but ah, it's gonna blow down it's so windy here today that's the end result Um, next time spraying the silver all over the white background and then doing the cloud pour and seeing what comes up. Shall I do that next? Give me a yes or a no. Go on. Have fun! Oh, I brought it inside and you can kind of see it better without me trying to put the sunlight on it. So here's a bit where I was spraying it right at the beginning. And see how it's mirrored oh, it's, so, it's such a cool effect and it's interesting how it's kind of it's when it dries it kind of squares up it must be the particles automatically doing that but it's really really pretty the way it's flipped through and I'm so glad I tried to bring it inside well it was to get it out of the um, dust massive dust storm that's going on outside and I thought I'll just see if there's any difference but how cool is it? Are you going to give it a whirl? Go on, give it a whirl.